Hello everyone, this is Nick from DCM Bioservices. Today I'm going to be walking you through basic manifold maintenance of your Biotech ELX405 system. As always, if you don't feel comfortable performing these services on your own, send us an email at service at dcmbio.com. We'll be happy to assist you. To get started on the maintenance, I personally like to run a self-check protocol. This will help to clear some of the moisture out of the lines and eventually make your job easier pulling the manifold off. This can be found under the utilities menu in the self-check option. Once you've run that and the system has gone back to the home screen, you can start to remove the manifold. Taking a 3.5 millimeter Allen key, you can remove the fixing screws on the end cap. I like to start with just a half turn to loosen the screws and then back them out entirely. Be sure to keep the spring, screw, and cap together. You'll need them later. Once that's done, you won't be needing the Allen key until we're ready to reassemble. The end cap pulls straight off from the manifold itself, sometimes with a little resistance. A good indication that you need to replace some end seals is when they don't come out. Once the end cap is removed, you can remove the manifold itself. Using your thumbs on the guide rail and your fingers on the side of the manifold, pull straight towards you. Sometimes you'll get a little resistance with the O-rings and there will usually be a little liquid at this point. It's a good idea to have a paper towel or some other absorbent material handy just to catch any drips underneath the manifold. Pulling straight out, you can invert the manifold and set it aside until you're ready to clean it. At this point, we can take a look at how our O-rings are doing. As you can see here, these could use a little love. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove them. And this can be done either using a thumbnail or if they give you a little too much resistance, take the larger stylus from the stylus kit and just slide it along the O-ring's body, pop it up out of the groove. Do that with both O-rings, and then we can clean the housing. Personally, I like to use an ethanol or an isopropyl mix and a soft brush. Wet the brush, and just like brushing teeth, small circular motions moving across the track. Once you've removed visible residue, you can take some canned air duster, dry the system out. Now be warned, there will still be some liquid in the dispense manifold tubing. So you'll need to take another bit of towel and cover it as you blow. That, once that's done, you can move on to the manifold itself. I like to start with the manifold inverted and pouring a little more alcohol into the troughs. This helps to clear out the channels of anything solid that's been built up in there. Once that's done, We'll take our soft-sided brush again, wetting it again, and at an angle, brushing each of the tubes. You don't need to worry about clearing the interior, we'll be doing that with the stylus kit. But the toothbrush helps to remove any buildup that's on the outside, and it'll reduce contamination when you're running. After that, you can begin cleaning the manifold itself. The dispense pins will use the yellow top stylus in your stylus kit. For the larger aspiration pins, you'll be using the red topped stylus. To clean them with the stylus, simply take the pin and insert it right into the tube. Uh, bring it up and down about three times usually to help knock anything that's been built up in there out. You'll do this for each tube. It's a very time consuming process, but the results are well worth it. Once done with the dispense tubes, move on to the aspiration tubes. Same idea, insert right into the tube, bring it up and down a few times, move on to the next. Once this is all said and done, you can clean out and dry the entire area. It's very important that the manifold be dry before you reinstall it so we get a good seal. So while that's drying, we can move on to replacing the O-rings themselves. Take your brand new O-rings and your index finger and your thumb 
stretch it across the track, pressing it into place. You'll do that for both O-rings. Again, making sure everything is dry, everything is seated correctly. They might pop out at you, just try again. Once the O-rings are in place, you can replace the manifold. It's very important that you take the correct side. You can see the end cap side has 24 holes for the different channels. So once you install, same as removing, right onto the guide rails, pressing firmly to the O-rings. Once that it's in place, we can move on to our end cap. You may remember from earlier, we had a few end seals that didn't quite stay with us. These will need to be replaced. Before we get into that, you'll want to inspect the remaining end seals and make sure there aren't any cracks, buildups, or any that look like they're a bit worn. These are very important that they're in good shape, otherwise you'll have leaks whenever you run the system. To remove an end seal, take some needle nose pliers, gripping on the interior of the seal itself, and pulling straight out. Putting new ones in is almost as easy. Simply press it in until it sits almost flush with the end cap. Once you've replaced all the end seals, you can put the end cap back on. Both models, the dual manifold and the single manifold, have an indicator for which end cap goes to which section. For the single manifold model, it really only determines which way the end cap sits. As you can see here, pins facing down, that'll be down. Press it onto the end, and now we're ready to remount. Remounting is the same as we had done just in reverse. Inserting the screws, I like to start them with my hands first, then grabbing our 3.5 millimeter Allen key and tightening them down. As an added measure, I like to add a little bit of torque, just a quarter of a turn to really make sure that the end cap is in place. Now that that's done, you've got a brand new manifold. What you can do at this point is I like to run a day rinse cycle to get some fluid flowing through. This is where you would notice any issues if you didn't have a good seal between, say, the O-rings or the end seals. You notice dripping at some point of the manifold, and that would mean that you need to start again. If you get a successful day rinse, I would prime it one more time, and you're good to run. Maintenance of a dual manifold is very similar to the single manifold. Only thing we need to keep in mind is we've got two separate manifolds, two separate end caps, and the O-ring position is a little different. You'll see that once we get opened. So for this, you'll need to remove all four of the fixing screws, which is the exact same procedure. Loosen first, fully remove. Make sure to keep the spring, screw, and cap together. Once the fixing screws are removed, you can remove the individual end caps. You'll likely get some resistance from end seals that are stuck in. If you do, just try to wiggle it a little bit, loosen it up. If in the process you remove the entire manifold from the back end, don't worry, we're going to be doing that anyway when we replace the O-rings. Removing the manifold is the same exact way as the single. It's just a matter of keeping them together. I like to use my middle finger on the lower manifold and my index finger on the top. Once apart, you can slide the manifolds along each other. Keep them together to protect your dispense pins. As you can see here, we took an O-ring with us, making our job a little easier. Removing the O-rings is the exact same procedure, again, where they're just in separate locations. As far as cleaning, you'll want to do them individually. Personally, I like to start with the dispense manifold, since it's a little more labor intensive. Just as before, a little alcohol and a light scrubbing. You may have noticed this manifold's pins are at a slight angle. The procedure is the exact same. You'll take your yellow stylus, 
insert it into each individual tube, and clear them out. And once you're done, make sure the system is nice and dry. For the aspiration set, the pins are a little bit longer. It's important to be careful when handling it as you don't want to bend any. That could cause poor aspirations or missed wells even. Little alcohol, little scrubbing. It's difficult to get into the middle sets of the pins. Typically you can run a rinse and soak procedure or you can just fill the dispense trough with alcohol and soak the entire manifold to clean them. Once you're ready, take your red top stylus and press each individual tube. Once the manifolds are nice and clean, let them dry for a little bit. Go ahead and clean up the O-ring track and dry it up. Placing the O-rings, just as you did on the single manifold. I prefer to start with the bottom as it's a little more difficult. You can see it's recessed relative to the top. And when you're ready, with the dual manifold it's important to mate the two together before you try to put it on the system. You'll notice that there are holes in the top of the dispense manifold. This is where the aspiration manifold sits. Keeping the sides together, as you can see the end caps, O-ring side, mate the holes and press the manifolds together. Reinstallation is best if you start with the dispense manifold. Sit it just on the edge of the guide rails, lifting the aspirate manifold until it reaches its guide rails. And push it back together and you're ready to reinstall the end caps. These have markings to indicate which belongs on the bottom and which belongs on the top. Making sure that all of your end seals are in position before replacing. When you're tightening down the fixing screws, I recommend doing one set at a time. Either start with the top or the bottom. It's not important so long as you stay together with them. And just like the single manifold, a little bit of torque at the end, just to make sure everything is nice and tight. Now you're ready to turn the system back on, run a day rinse or a prime cycle and see how you did. Thanks for watching. If you have any additional questions, put them in the comments below. To see additional how-to lab automation videos and to check out our service options, visit dcmbio.com. If you have more in-depth questions, or need to contact us about servicing your equipment, send an email to service at dcmbio.com. You can find links to our LinkedIn, email, and website below in the description.